Hello class. Welcome to lecture number seven, um, a review of organizational issues in child welfare. Um, I've been reviewing the wikis and um, for the most part everybody's been laying out some really good descriptions of the issues that you've been covering um, and those issues uh, deal with uh, things that the children and families that we seek to serve in our child welfare agencies are are having to grapple with and, and work with um, and you lay out all, you lay out all those paragraphs all together and um, if you're like me you kind of get overwhelmed uh, what what can you actually do that would, is going to make a difference because the issues seem so complicated and so complex well, if if we look at the uh, uh, at the Chinese characters for crisis and opportunity, we see that they they have a, a a common character. Now, there's some debate about this. So, if you're a Chinese linguist, uh, you would probably disagree with me. But it, it still makes a good story that in the midst of um, crisis opportunity can arise and if nothing else when we enter the lives of, of families after a hotline call um, after a case has been open um, by definition they're in crisis and if we don't walk into those homes if we don't um, work with these families with a sense of opportunity then we might as well not be doing social work so um, we have to to be thinking along those lines. Um, what's frustrating though is that currently only about 5% uh, of child welfare allocations go directly to services. Uh, the biggest proportion, um, about 95%, goes to out-of-home care, uh, treatment, residential, foster care, otherwise. Now. Now, don't get me wrong, kids in these settings are getting services, but simply providing those services in out-of-home settings is very, very expensive. And it always begs the question, what if we spent 95% of our money on out-of-home services? Could we um, prevent uh, a lot of those out-of-home placements? Um, why, while I don't know the specific answer for any one of those issues, I do know the solution has to be systemic. It has to be something that fundamentally addresses the many components of our systems. Um, for example, just dealing with funding or just dealing with supervision or increasing um, funding for training or looking at information systems by themselves those are not systemic solutions because you deal with one thing and there's these other processes, these other departments in the agency just continue doing what they do. So what would a systemic solution look like? Well, this is what it might look like. It might look, that you, might look like somebody writes a grant for fun, you know, using funding for training with the courts about the issue of substance abuse. So we're not to the end of the class yet where you will be pulling all of these things together in one single piece yet. For this, for this next report though, you need to be thinking about the right side of this equation. And that is, where do issues like the courts and substance abuse intersect with each other? Now your task this week will be to start fleshing out um, some of these interconnections. And I wanted to give you some ideas and scenarios to spur your thinking. Um, what do these ideas make you think about after you have read your reports? What ideas pop into your head? Conversely, if you've read your reports, you look at these scenarios and no ideas have popped into your head, I would suggest that you might want to go back and read the reports again or maybe read um, a couple of different reports because you need to start seeing these issues even though you're reading about the courts my guess is they're going to say something about 
substance abuse. They're more than likely going to say something about domestic violence. You read about mental health services. More likely than not, they're going to talk about access issues in rural areas. So you need to be thinking about these interconnections. But beyond that, the things that a child welfare agency might do, um, what would these things look like? So uh, for those of you who have been out there and practicing, you know there's a big difference between assessment and screening. Um, any, just about any professional can do a screening, but it's like you, you have to be have to receive certain certifications or trainings in order to do an assessment. But what can we learn from simply doing a training and looking at cross-system collaboration? Um, if we're working with a family that we know has mental health, substance abuse issues, and they live in a rural area, how might the courts deal with them? Um, that And that's a, sc a screening type issue that we need to bring our professional expertise to the table. And then you're dealing with families and there's difficulties that, that arise. How often do we look at these difficulties from a multicultural perspective? I mean, what is the meaning of a family for this particular family? And uh, for those of you, again, who've been out there, who've done home visits, I remember when I used to do family preservation about 20 years ago, I mean, you go from this family to this family, and they don't look anything like um, the family I grew up in, but that's their family. What is the meaning of their family to them? Um, what does it mean to them to receive help? What's the role of males or females in the family? Um, what's, what issues related to power and privilege um, do they perceive? Uh, do I project? Um, and then the issues around stigma, when you're talking about mental health and substance abuse and domestic violence, how does stigma play into that? And uh, through all of that, you have issues related to prejudice. And so you take these dynamics and you overlay them against the issues um, how do these things interconnect? How does one feed into the other? And then how do we go about getting this information shared between all these different groups? Um, that will be another key piece because the connection between these entities is information. That's the only thing that connects um, a mental health agency, a substance abuse program, a domestic violence shelter when um, a children's division worker or another worker from the community goes into these homes, finds out what's going on, and then starts talking to their colleagues involved in this case. It's information. So are we going to, I should have uh, put in phone there, but are we going to copy and mail this information? Are we going to fax it? Um, do you know what that equals? It equals a snail's pace. So what happens? We get together meetings, these um, interdisciplinary meetings, these case conferences, these family team decision-making meetings, and we're just repeating basic information to bring everybody up to speed, and that takes so much time. And by the time you brought everybody up to speed, there's no time left to make decisions because everybody's beepers going off, and it's, it just doesn't work that way. So is there some way that we can do some type of electronic information sharing? Another scenario, um, what if Monique Hernandez not only has her MSW from M-I-Z-Z-O-U, but she goes on and gets her LCSW, and she's now a clinical specialist uh, that deals for clients who have substance abuse and depression issues, and she has evidence-based background and training on how to deal with that. Right now, most of those families are referred out. What would happen if those families were able to get those services from the children's division? Um, Caseloads would look different. Uh, would they look any better? I don't know, but they would, they would certainly look different. Would it cost more? Yes. But how much does it cost not to deal with these things and to put a, a child in foster care? Um, so that's that's another issue to ponder. And again, I'm not trying to be Pollyannish on this. I'm not saying these are the solutions because they're not. But we need to be thinking in these directions. 
And the, the, the other thing is, and most of you already know this, but just in case, um, a family's life begins before a child welfare agency even knows about them, and it continues way after we're gone. So if you're thinking about domestic violence, um, domestic violence occurs way before, possibly way before the first hotline call. And if the Children's Division opens the case, they deal with domestic violence issues, provide treatment and services. There's a measure of safety for people in the household. So the Children's Division, by definition, has to close their case. But does that mean that everything's going to be perfectly fine for the family afterwards? No. Um, so in this, in this last point, you need to be thinking about you know, child welfare, perhaps beyond the notion of the children's division. And we'll be talking about that even more so uh, beginning uh, in your next report. But I want to also plant that seed. What can happen within the context of a child welfare agency like the children's division versus what could happen in a community-based child welfare organization that may include the children's division, but may include other agencies in a community. So, the main thing is you need to start putting the pieces together. Um, you don't um, have to, again, you don't have to post a response to every one of these ideas. However, uh, please post responses as you start to connect the dots between the issue you're responsible for and how it overlaps with your fellow group members' issues, and then where it's um, and where they're manifestly obvious. Mention the processes, training, information systems, workforce supervision, where these things come up. Um, please include the name of the report that inspired your thinking. Um, you need to think systemically across the issue and how a small change with one issue can have a profound effect on the other issues and possibly the lives of children and their families. Um, it's up to the group as to how or where you want to post your response. You can either do it in the forums or on your wiki. The specific responses will be will most likely not end up in your second report at this point, simply the way you write about them, but the ideas they generate will. Um, and these ideas need to come from thinking and how you're potentially creating a new way to build a new type of child welfare agency, organization, or system. Um, you will have until Friday evening to make your post and then review, respond to your peers' post by Sunday evening. That concludes the lecture.